All right, welcome everybody to the Wine and Dine uh, evening. This is where we get to have um, dinner with a couple of hundred of our favorite family and friends. And I call it the biggest dinner party in the world, but we get to feature some of the best wines on the planet. And those all come from Wine Ambassadors. Tonight, we're going to be featuring a great wine. It's a Cab Sav called the Antonio. And we're going to let him, uh, somebody else, tell you a little bit more about that. But we love to start off the show uh, with a toast to everybody and all that we have going on. And tonight, we have the pleasure of, of hearing that toast from our compliance officer, friend, mentor, business partner, Miss Tanya Rickard. Thank you, ma'am, for doing that for us. Welcome. Thank you. And the opportunity to drink wine, as I always say, my name is Kenny and I love wine. <laughs> no, more than that, though, guys, being serious, I actually really love our wine. It's amazing. Definitely. Definitely amazing. But here's a toast, you guys, to all of you. Wishing you guys a happy holiday season filled with joy, laughter, and love. And may the memories last you a lifetime. So cheers. Cheers. Uh, I'll give a little Rory imitation because he's not here so that nobody misses him. It's so good. Mm. Fantastic. So we got we have uh, three good cooks lined up. We're gonna we're gonna actually do things a little bit different. We're gonna go backwards. We're gonna start off talking about the dessert, and then we're gonna talk about the main dish, and then we're gonna go over and talk about the appetizers, and then we'll talk a little bit of, of the whole wine company. And then we'll start pairing and tasting from the appetizers, main dish, back to the dessert. And it's going to work out fine. So without any further delay, you guys, welcome to the Wine and Dine. Like I say, it's the biggest dinner party on the planet. No, I, I, I've never been able to sit down and have dinner with 123 of close friends and family before. I'm Italian. We've had big family get-togethers, but never 123 at the table. So that's, this is fun, and we and it's so educational. We're going to learn a lot about wine and food pairing, which is my favorite part about this whole great company. But tonight, we're going to uh, feature a really good wine also. Let's call, it's a Cab Sav called the Antonio. That Antonio name is a Greek name, and it's uh, the surname of none other than our fantastic, brilliant-minded IT master, uh, and wine connoisseur, and chef, and cook, and number one son, um, Mr. Peter Antoniel. So, Peter, tell us all about that wine, and then tell us about this great dessert that you're making today. Okay, thank you. Well, the wine is a uh, it's a wonderful Cabernet Sauvignon, but I'll talk about that a little later. Um, I'm going to talk about this dessert that I I have a a uh, half pound of butter melting right now. This is a Greek dessert my mother would make all the time when we were kids called palva. It is incredibly easy, very quick to make, just needs to set for a little while, which is why I asked you to have me go first. All, the, all that's in this is half pound of butter, uh, two cups of farina, um, a syrup I made from two cups of sugar and three cups of water, and some cinnamon. That's it. So I got my butter melted. I'm going to mix in the farina and get it toasting because I got to cook it until it gets nice toasted and uh, slightly browned. Then I add the syrup and put it into the mold. And that's mm. then when I finish it, I uh, sprinkle a little cinnamon on it to uh, serve it. That's it. So as you can see, it's just. It's just a matter of toasting, toasting the, whenever you do anything involving, yeah, I mean, the, the, the nice thing of it, grains, nuts, um, toasting them makes a huge difference. It makes, brings out all kinds of extra flavors that are going to play wonderfully against all the richness of that Cabernet. Um, gets that nutty, toasty, bready, all those wonderful flavors. Raw flour, raw grains, raw nuts, just you're missing something if you don't toast them. So I'm going to be sitting here stirring and toasting until it gets nice and brown. And then I'm going to, like I said, then I'm going to dump in the sugar, the syrup, mix it together, pour it into this mold. Uh, all I have is a loaf pan. My mother had a fancier mold that she used. And for purposes, I'm also going to show you, you can do it as an individual thing. I have just these little cups that, um, that you can use to just do an individual version of it. And 
my mother was telling me you could actually just spoon it out onto a uh, onto a sheet and make sort of little uh, little little mounds. But uh, I figured I have these little round bowls that are kind of mound shaped and make it the same idea as the other as the bigger version. And this last, it actually tastes better the next day and the day after that. And I can't say any longer because it never lasts that long. But um, and it's great for breakfast, not just dessert. It's obviously pretty similar to breakfast, but um, and boy, does it smell good here getting this stuff toasted. So, right. <laughs> so I don't know about you guys, uh, Dell, Peter, Morley. He did he have you at butter, sugar, syrup? Where, where did he? I mean, I, I was gonna say he had me at butter, and then he started talking about sugar and syrup and all the rest of the favorite sweet stuff I love. Yeah. I mean, it's simple, but it, it gets a pretty rich flavor from from getting like the toasting of the farina is the big important part. And you got to keep stirring it. You don't want to burn it. You got to keep on top of it. But uh, it smells pretty nice in here. And that's and this is the kind of dessert that pairs great with wine. There's not it's sweet, but it's not overwhelming. And you have those. Now, for a Cabernet, you can't go with a really acidic taste. That would, that's the one thing you can't do with Cab. So you've got to get things that are rich, and, and that's what we're doing here. And that's why this works. You couldn't, you know, if you want to do something with berries or fruit or lemon, that's where you've got to go with uh, a Pinot or something else. But with a Cab, you want to go with nuts and toast and bread and things like that, which pretty much is the entire... Uh, flavor profile of anything Greek. So kind of works works both with the name on the bottle and uh, what's inside of it. So fantastic. Anyway, so you mix I it up, you put it in the big dish or the single serve uh, little dishes and, and let it sit for how long? Um, well, usually I like to let it sit for an hour or two, but I think the little ones will be ready much sooner because it's much smaller. So yeah, by the end of the show, they should be ready to, ready to eat. Yeah, fantastic. Speaking of bread, because I heard you mention bread, um, we're, I think we're going to share a little bit about that tonight too. Victoria, I've seen your other computer come in, so you can open up whichever one you want. Um, so while Peter is getting that all dished out, we're going to let it sit for 12 minutes. By the time we get back to him, it should be ready. And then uh, he's going to tell us how well it pairs with that wonderful cab sab that I know he's got there on the counter too. So, Victoria, whichever uh, computer or phone you choose to use, let everybody know, what are you cooking tonight over there in that kitchen? You're muted. Can you unmute, Victoria? Oh, can you hear me now? There you go. Yep. Okay, um, I am making a smoked seafood chowder, and um, I went ahead and uh, rendered the bacon and some um, onions and celery with some of the olive, I mean, some of the oil from the smoked oysters. Mm. And I just put the potatoes in, so I'm bringing them back up to temp. It doesn't take but just a few minutes for them to cook, and then I'll add the cream and the seafood. Um, but that's where I am right now, and I am going to serve these in sourdough bread bowls. My power went out for a while today. My stove went out. So I'm actually doing it on a hot plate on um, my table next to the fireplace. So <laughs> that's, called, that's called superhero status. No power. <laughs> <laughs> got, got the phone, got the power back on just in time to charge up the phone and the laptop and everything else that she needed. And it's time to get back in the kitchen. You're amazing. Absolutely. And but that was <laughs> smoked oysters and, and bacon, and I, I miss I might have missed a couple of those ingredients. Crab and clams. Crab and clam. Mm -hmm. Yep, that's in a sourdough bread bowl. Yes. That's okay. gonna. I think that's gonna taste delicious and pair great with uh, that Antonio. How much time yeah. do you need before you, that's uh, reheated, warmed up, or ready to go? Um, the whole thing um, should be about 20 minutes. And oh, here's key ingredient. I am, I do have the Antonio to try with it. But so. to cook in it, I have the Flyer Pinot Grigio. And the way that you do this, it's very, very important. You pour yourself a glass, a big glass. You take a sip. 
<laughs> yep. And then you pour the whole glass in the pot, which I've already done. So this is my second glass. So but very important measurement. You get to sip and sip and sip and sip and sip on that one. Yep, exactly. <laughs> it's the chef and not just the recipe. Yes, take care of the chef. Absolutely. Thanks. Good deal. So how much, but we're going to go over to Doug and Kelly and we're going to see what they got over there for our derbs. <laughs> and then we'll be, uh, we'll be back to you in a few minutes and you'll probably be ready then, right? Yeah, it won't take it long. Once the potatoes go through, the rest of it's just a couple of minutes. Yep, and then Dina Harding told us a little bit ago that you already posted your recipe. Thank you very much. Uh, yeah, I didn't send it to the Wine Ambassador page yet, but I did post a page on it, so. Yeah, fantastic. Well, we'll get that out to everybody. And I'm sure Peter, uh, will, will, somebody will get that recipe from Peter, too. Um, all that yeah, sounds. I'll get it to you. Yeah. Yep. All right, so let's run out to Kansas. Uh, out there in the best pheasant hunting countryside I've ever seen in my life. And listen and see what um, Mr. Doug and Miss, Miss Kelly have cooking up in their kitchen. Hey, now we live in Missouri. Kansas City. In Kansas City, there you go. It's still, yeah, can oh, Kansas City, Missouri. Yeah, Kansas City. All right, well, it's still. From Kansas, I'll give you a break. It, yes, you're such a Kansas City fan. I keep forgetting that, but it's still the best pheasant hunting I've ever seen over that way. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's true. Uh, anyway, uh, we're here, and uh, my wife Kelly is cooking a nice little uh, appetizer, and we're pairing it, of course, uh, with the featured wine, the Antonio, and we're excited about that. Cab Sav, and she's making a uh, a mushroom bruschetta, and uh, I'm going to let her explain it to her to you all. And she's over here uh, sauteing some mushrooms. So I'm going to grab my computer and walk over here. And uh, if y'all let me know if you can see, she's right here. Say hi, Kelly. Hey, everybody. <laughs> yeah, so I just threw the um, shiitake mushrooms in with a sliced shallot. So this is going to cook down and let the mushrooms brown for maybe about five minutes or so. Um, I'll add some marjoram and some um, uh, granul or not granulated, but uh, chopped minced garlic um, here as we get down towards the end of the cooking time. Um, I think marjoram is kind of an underused um, herb, so I'm really excited to use that um, with these mushrooms. Ultimately, they're going to be topped on some toasted um, country loaf. Um, those were toasted in the oven with a little bit of olive oil. And then when they came out, I rubbed them with a cut piece of garlic just to add a little bit of extra Yum. flavor. So uh, it yep. should be really flavorful and um, honestly a nice appetizer for, you know, the holidays if you're anticipating, for example, some vegetarian friends. Mm -hmm. um, it's hard enough to be a... Um, Kind of what you'd consider a heavy appetizer um, and just a nice compliment if you're trying to um, cut back maybe on the amount of meat that you're consuming. I mean mushrooms are really hearty. They're also super good for you with a lot of protein um, that's included with them. Um, they um, are low calorie, calorie, lots of fiber, so um, should be really delicious. And I think it'll go great with the Antino since it's kind of a, um, this is kind of a rich dish. And I think that'll go really nicely with the Antonio um, cab. We'll be done so about five or, ten, or five or six minutes, so. Five or six minutes, fantastic. Yeah. So I think I think everything, all of uh, both that, that appetizer and that, um, the stew that Victoria's making is going to pair great with, I forgot that she was putting smoked oysters and all the smoked stuff in there on top of that um, sourdough bread. That's going to taste really good with the Antonio. Uh, Peter, do you want to talk a little bit about your wine before I talk a little bit about the wine club? Or do you want me to talk about the wine club and then you tell us about your wine? That has Why don't you talk about the wine club first since I'm still si simmering with this year? All right, fantastic. So this wine club, here, here's what brought us all together is the best wine club on the planet. I'm, of course, I'm being biased again, right? But a, a wine club is being created 
that's going to bring the arguably some of the best wines on the planet out to the marketplace through um, not the normal distribution channels, but a wine of the month club membership where people can join and become wine of the month club members and get this deliciousness shipped to right to their door from the warehouse every single month. We don't have to touch it. There's no middlemen involved and all the savings of all those normal distributions are passed along to you as a client wine club member. We're getting incredibly valued wines at a Walmart price, but they're made from top producers out of Napa Valley and they're absolutely delicious. They're fine wines made the right way, not bottled until they're ready, no artificial sulfites added in to give you a rot gut and headache and all the other stuff that comes from cheap mass produced wines that you find on the shelf at Walmart or some of the you know liquor stores around the neighborhood. These are delicious wines being made the right way and the only way to get them is to be a member of Wine Ambassador and be a wine club member. It's a lot more than just a Wine of the Month club, though. It's a wine education club. I'm going to tell you, you know, 10, 10, 12 years from now, if you asked me if I like wine, I would have, I would have probably said no, because I grew up with that wine around all the time. And it was, you know, it was burgundies and really strong stuff that I wasn't into. Um, or it was a cheap, sweet wine that that you know one of my aunts or my mother had at around the dinner table and so i would say no i'm not really a big wine fan um but that's changed 10 or 15 years ago probably and i started understanding more about wines and tasting different wines and i slowly just got more and more into um understanding and food pairing and all that stuff but when rory came to me about uh what four years ago now five years ago now and told me that we had a wine of the month club that we get to promote and we get to be part of. I got truly excited. I actually pulled over in my car and as he was telling me and reached for my wall, whipped out my credit card and said, please get me into that. I want to be a part of that. Um, taking wine to the world. You know, when I was a little kid, I had dreams of owning a vineyard in, in Tuscany. Some of you heard me tell that story before because I had wine all around, but I, I didn't really like those wines. I wanted to learn how to make good wine at, that everybody loved and enjoyed. And I wanted the whole romantic lifestyle of owning a vineyard and, you know, the community gets involved during the harvest and the big celebration at the end of the year, because everybody knows now likes a party too. Right. So, but something happened when I became a teenager, got my first job and I looked at that paycheck and said, mm -mm, it's going to take me too long to save up that many millions of dollars to buy a vineyard in Tuscany. So that dream faded away, but thanks to Peter and Brad and, Rory and Tammy, the big circle of life, I get to take fine wines and introduce the rest of the world to it. I don't own a vineyard. Because I don't have the headaches of owning the vineyard either. Um, I just get to be a member and promote other people um, to become members and enjoy the wine just like we do. Um, so there's a lot of different ways to get involved. You can be just a customer and get the delicious wine shipped to your house. And if you share that with three other people, you can get this wine shipped free to your house every single month. Or you can decide that you want to, you know, do it as a side gig and maybe just supplement your income a little bit to have what some people call that mud money left over at the end of the month to do extra little things or maybe add on to your retirement plan and have a few a hundred to a thousand extra dollars coming in a month. Uh, or you could do like um, myself and Dina and, and so many other people you see on the screen to say, I'm gonna, I want to make this my new career. I'm going to dive in and go all the way with it. Whatever you decide to do. We've got a plan for you. We've got support for you. People who have got you here will show you um, what you need to do to get that far. Gordon, I see you down there. You're, you're a superstar with this company. He's sharing it. Linda Horn, she's uh, very passionate about everything that we're doing. She's sharing it. Whoever got you here is somebody that has a lot of passion for this wine club and what we're doing, and they're happy to get with you and share it. So, you know, there's a lot of different ways to get involved and there's a lot of different ways to get paid. Just know that everything you do and everything you say and everybody you get in contact with and every bottle of wine that moves out of that warehouse, you or and somebody is getting paid on it. Um, the compensation plan, when you look at it for the first time, can, see, can seem a little complex because you're just looking at it for the first time. So I'm not going to go into it. Just know that you as a customer can get free wine. You as an ambassador, a full member, can get free wine. And if you want to... Uh, make make earn money by doing that then just keep sharing it with more and more people because the more people you share it with uh, the more income you're going to generate right but let me tell you what something i've heard and peter maybe he'll back this up a little bit 
about wine customers. The economy goes up and it goes down and it goes all over the place, right? In everybody's household, and a lot of you people will probably raise your hand in a second, when, when it comes time to crunch the numbers in the house or maybe, you know, not getting those pizzas every Friday or cutting back on this and cutting back on this, people don't cut back on getting their wine. People don't say, uh, you know, I, I need to save some extra money this, uh, this month, so I'm not going to buy wine this weekend. No, that's the last thing that gets cut in any household. A lot of other businesses we've been involved in, customers stick around for four, six, eight months, baby. Wine ambassador, Peter, they stick around for how many years now? 10, 11, 12 years? <laughs> I don't know. I'll find out when they stop sticking around. <laughs> when they stop sticking around, right. But wine customers don't just uh, buy wine. and you know, A wine lover doesn't buy wine for a couple of months. They buy, they buy wine for years. And it's the last thing they would ever consider, uh, consider getting rid of to take care of the budget. So we've got a company where we can build residual income that has a retention probably better than anything else out there I've ever seen. And it's a fun thing. It's a social thing. You can have gatherings at the house and share good wines with everybody. And, you know, when they hear you talk about the varietal, the body, what it pairs with, how to taste it, how to smell it, how to aerate it, how to decant it, and all the wonderful things we get to learn here then, um, you know, it just brings such value to, to them that they value you more. As I, I have a friend, if I went to dinner and Dina was sharing all that things, that stuff with me, I'd say, wow, this is awesome. I have a friend that's a wine expert now. This is, this is great, right? It's, it's just a fun thing to be a part of. Um, and, if you, and anybody can be a part of this. If you want to be a part of something like that, just get to the person who is introducing you to this, who brought you here, who shared the, this web link with you, this Zoom with you, and tell them, uh, what you're looking for. I want to be a customer or I would like to make this a side gig or I'd like to make as much money as Linda Horn's making because uh, it, it can be done here. <laughs> Linda. There you go. There's your smile. There we go. All right. So it's a great thing to be a part of. I hope um, I hope you guys understand it. If you have any questions, just get back to who got you here. Now we're going to go back over to Doug and Kelly. Hopefully I gave you enough time to finish the mushrooms and you're ready to plate that and we can't wait to see it. Yes, you're ready. All right. Get over here and... Let me bring one other thing over. Okay. okay. All right. So the mushrooms, the marjoram, the garlic and all the goodness in that um, has cooked down and sauteed so the mushrooms are a little bit brown. Next thing we're gonna do is add a ricotta Parmesan and lemon um, spread to the tops of the um, toasted bread. Let me just do up a couple here real quick. And now I can see you. I just pinned you. It's like, oh, goodness. Yeah. Delicious. So then on top of that uh, ricotta um, cheese mixture, we're going to add some mushrooms. Yum, yum. I love mushrooms, so I'm, I'm piling them high. And then on top of that, we're gonna add just a little bit of baby arugula. So you can call this healthy. You know, a little bit of greens with your uh, mushrooms and, and uh, toast. And really that's all there is to that. Um, goes amazing with the uh, richness of the Antonio wine and the richness of the mushrooms. So, bon appetito. Bon appetito. So do you cut those in half or cut them in fours? Or you just whole, whole, pick up the whole piece? You and... know, I, what I had was a, an organic country loaf from our local organic market. So I just sliced um, off, you know, the uh, uh, normal bread slices and then cut those in half. So it'd be a really good appetizer side. If it's just for you, you know, at home, you might want to not slice them in half and just have the whole enchilada. Um, but uh, yeah, so this is an appetizer size that uh, I think would be great at uh, a holiday gathering. Yeah, if it was just for me, I would take two of them, put them together and make a sandwich. Right, right, <laughs> right. That looks delicious. So who's going to, is Doug going to taste it now and tell us how well it pairs with that? Well, uh, well now here, let me hold the camera and oh. uh, let Doug do that. Okay. Jump in there. I get my wine. Get, get in there. 
He's so spoiled, Doug. I can do this part. Yep. <laughs> it's going to be messy. Yeah, well, it's going to be a messy. I have to get it. See, I like to have Peter talk about that, too. I like to tape a sip first, then take a bite, then take another sip. I'm going to ask Peter what the best way to do that is, too. Mm. Mm, that's so delicious. And not a huge mushroom plant fan, but it does taste really, really good. So tell us what's happening there. What, what's popping? Well, yeah, it tastes very earthy, very, uh, can't really think of the right words, but it's, it's delicious. That, that's the easiest word. Earthy. So are you take, did the wine taste um, differently with something being pulled out of the wine, or did the, the, the wine make the mushrooms? They complement each that. other, and, and, it, and it did. It tastes great by itself, but it tastes even better with the, the prepared food. The richness of the two complement each other. Yes. Right. And that's the, that's the beauty of pairing the right way, right? Just knowing how to pair, what to pair. And it's yeah, good so to experiment. Have, you can set that down. Mm -hmm. So you got to, does yeah. Kelly have a glass? Um, I'm going to get her to try it next. She's yep. next. Here she comes. Here I come. Will I be as messy as Doug? I don't know. <laughs> That's good, isn't it? Delicious. Mm -hmm. Yes. She's my wine expert. Oh, so. wow. Mm. Yeah, I can highly recommend the pairing. Mm. Really good. Yeah. I already know. I can almost taste it. Just this listening to you put it together, what's in there and the crunchiness of the bread. The, I the love meat, me some mushrooms. The mushrooms. I, I love mushrooms sauce. too. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, and the sh and some of the other choices, like the shallots, are a great choice. They're not as overwhelming as an onion, but it gives you a much richer flavor. That's beautiful with the cab and exactly. the margarine. I love that you. I love that you use margarine. That's such an under uh, appreciated herb. Uh, totally. So, so the the whole package there is is really well chosen. Thank you. Yeah. And I'm a big mushroom fan, a fan too, Kelly. I, I've loved mushrooms ever since the '70s when I used to get the, <laughs> what kind when of I used to get the extra those, extra mushrooms, extra cheese and mushrooms on my pizza from Panora uh, Pizzeria. You silly! <laughs> All right. <laughs> uh, so that was a great appetizer. Now we're going to go over to uh, and thank you both so very very much. It looks delicious. Oh, I know it probably is, Doug. You're cut off. The rest of that's for Kelly. Leave it alone. I'm just kidding. <laughs> uh, you're, you're spoiled, buddy. Have a great night, and thank you for getting on here and, and sharing that recipe. And I know you'll have a page out if you don't already, if you haven't already done it. Already got it written. Yeah, yeah, I figured. Yeah. I figured oh, we so. Know. We gotta make a picture so she can publish it. Yeah. Great. Did you take any pictures while she was cooking? Uh, I, I did not. Mm. We'll, we'll get some pictures though. Fantastic. Well, thanks again, both of you. And Kelly, it's always great to see you. Thank you for having us. Good to see you. All right. So now we're going to run. We got the appetizer um, and our mouth are all watering. We're going to run back over to Victoria and see how she's doing. Uh, see if she's had enough time. And those potatoes are done and she's ready. Victoria, where'd you go? Well, if Victoria is still cooking, we can talk a little about this wine in the meantime. So. Yes, that'd be great, Peter. Not only the – oh, there she is. Yeah, no, I was going to say that'd be great, Peter. Um, mine is coming together, but it's still just a slight underdone. I just put the seafood in. And what's How much time? So. How much time do you think you need, Victoria? Um, just however long Peter talks. Okay, great. Well, Peter, besides, wine besides, wine. Talking, besides talking about your wine – um, which is delicious and fantastic, obviously. There's a big, always a big question. Sip the wine and then taste, um, or taste and then sip the wine, or sip the wine before and after the taste. What do you, what do you recommend is the best way to really get to understand that pairing? Well, first of it is, you know, is take the wine on its own. You want to, you want to really examine the wine. You want to swirl it around a little in the glass to get some of the aromas 
and then you know look at what you've got uh you know, look at the color the the thickness you want to look you'll see they dif they differ in you know some will have more viscosity some will look thicker some will look thinner and that's all part of the experience it's not just the taste it's the way it feels the way it goes down your mouth the way it, the way you smell the smell is more of the taste than anything else so you know swirl it around really get your nose in there see what are you what are you getting like so so now you have the what do you smell there when you, you stick your nose in there? I do smell the, the, the blackberries and the pepper. That's because I've already had a few sips too, though. Um, but I think yeah, I smell yeah. mostly pepper uh, on the first sip. Yep. But I can taste both. And that's what I like about these is you got that taste in the front and then the taste in the, in the back end is completely different than when it first went in. And I always sniff yeah. and I always get a little sip and I always suck the air through my teeth on the first couple of times to get do that extra air aerating in my mouth that just get it all over my taste buds. Because so the taste buds aren't just on our tongue, right? Right, exactly. And, and a lot of it, it's called, um, uh, a, it's called a retronasal tasting where you actually taste it differently when it comes back through your throat and up into your nose. So you're different than smelling it directly. You smell it backwards and that's part of the experience and part of it as it goes down it, it continues to evolve in your mouth so you, you yep. get it in there you do what you were saying and there's like four quadrants of taste bugs on our tongue um that will catch the different parts of that flavor the different flavors that are inside there but i think there's also some sort of taste buds on your nose on your on the edges of your lips is anybody ever put like a lip gloss on or just you know barely touch something to your lip and you can smell and taste it right away. The smell helps you taste, but it feels like as soon as it touches your lips, you're tasting it. I'm sure everybody's done that at least once or twice, right? And then oh, that yeah. smell yeah. kind of just helps your helps recognize that taste even faster, doesn't it? Yeah. Also, the body temperature will warm it up a little and and so get some of those smells more volatile, and you can really get more of the flavor. But the other thing to do is once you once you swallow it, is concentrate on the finish. And that's one of the things you'll notice in our wines, you, you know, your average supermarket wine, you're not going to see. You, it, as soon as it goes down, it's out of your mouth or worse, it leaves something behind you don't want. Um, yeah. Ours, you look at the structure, okay. where in your mouth you feel it, how far, how long it lasts. You know, try counting, think, look at, pay attention to how it evolves in your mouth as you continue to drink it. So we've had our first sip. Now you go taste the food, get a little bite of the food and just try to think about the food and think about how those same flavors will go together and if, what you expect. Then start have then then get them together. You then have then have a little more bite of the food and some of the wine and think about how did it change? How did the wine change the food? How did the food change the wine? Yep. So you can see the whole experience. You know, and and also think about how does it feel? How does it does it add moisture? What is it? Is it thick? Again, the thickness. How does it feel on your tongue? You'd almost believe it or not sort of chewing motion will get some of that flavor out that you wouldn't have gotten otherwise. It's so good. <laughs> it is, it is, it is so good. And there's so much going on and it's not just one immediate taste. What you got in your nose was the, like you said, that earthy peppery notes and the black cherry and berries. But once you, once it hits your tongue, you, you really get that black pepper on the finish. In the middle, you're getting all those you know, black, black cherry and currant and earth and all kinds of Blackberry to currant and the earthy fare. And, 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 you know, I guess this would go with um, a burger, a steak, or any kind of red meat that's full uh, roasted or grilled. Uh, but it's also going to go with the mushrooms, fantastic. And, um, what, and uh, the smoked foods like Victoria's making. Um, it's just about, it's so many different things you can have it with. It's incredible. Yeah, I mean, it's terrific. One of the things you look for when you're pairing is if it's a very rich food, if it has a lot of fat or structure to it, then you need a heavier wine. You need those tannins in that structure. Um, that's why you know, a lighter Pinot Noir would be kind of lost against a steak. Or a, um, it, it'll pick up different things. And some, some of our Pinots are much heavier, but... Um, this is one for the big, heavy foods, for the for all those nut, nutty, earthy, toasty flavors, all, all the and especially meat. I mean, if you're 
the steak and cabernet is one of the you know great joys you can have. It's Peter, yeah, I heard you talking about swirling it before you. Um, we'll, we'll give them some golden nuggets here and give Victoria a little bit more time. Whenever you're swirling your 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 wine in your glass, always set it down on the surface and move yeah. it in little circles like that so you don't spill it on your clothes. But there's another reason right. why why do you hold a glass like that on the stem instead of the way I see some people holding it like this, Peter? Yeah, like I usually do because my hands aren't that great. But what you don't want to do is you don't want to heat up the wine. Your body, your hand has a lot of a lot of heat to it. So if you hold your wine like this, you're going to be warming your wine up. And people already tend to have red wines too warm. Room temperature was room temperature in France in you know in the 1800s, not room temperature where we have indoor heating and in, which is probably about 60 degrees. So I've mentioned this before. One of the things, people always have reds too hot and whites too cold. Uh, the best rule of thumb I can tell you is whatever your wine is, if it's a white and it's in the refrigerator, take it out for 10, 15 minutes before you drink it. If it's a red and it's at room temperature, stick it in there for 10 or 15 minutes before you drink it. Which and is exactly what I did. You, you shared that probably four or five, six months ago. And, yeah. I, and I tried to, I remember trying to recall that for everybody once but I knew it was a 10 minute rule. Whites, take it out for 10 minutes. Reds, put it in for 10 minutes. Um, that's, a, that's a great rule, which is exactly what I did tonight. It was room temperature and I stuck it in there for probably closer to 15 minutes and it was absolutely perfect. Yeah, and I mean, you can experiment with it, see what it tastes like at room temperature. It'll taste different. Your taste buds taste things different at different temperatures. And the balance is not quite there if you're too cold or too hot. Mm -hmm. Too cold, you can't taste things too hot, you almost taste too much of the alcohol and not as much of the other flavors. Right. So, so it's the that balance is really important to get the temperature. I mean, they sell all kinds of gadgets that I have and tem and thermometers if you want to be very exact, but it's not that fine a science. Because okay, so that ten minute rule will get you there every time. This is fantastic. How many of you get to go have dinner with your friends and family in the neighborhood or coworkers? Get this kind of education and about such a fun product it just doesn't happen anywhere else. I love it. Uh, Victoria, you can turn your camera on anytime you're ready. As soon as I see your camera turn on, I know you're ready to share that delicious stew with everybody. Yes, there she is. <laughs> the potatoes are done. They're, they're not, um, they're still firm out. If it were, you know, a normal time, I would let them cook just a little bit more. But if you can see the oyster and the clam and the bits of crab meat and the bacon mm -hmm. all in there. I did add um, a little bit of Old Bay and some black pepper, probably too much black pepper, but I think it's going good with the Cab Sav. And no such violet sea salt. Um, it's got a little bit of grape essence. It's actually really good in here. It needed a little salt, so I used that. And mm. I did cheat with my bread bowl, my sourdough bread bowl. I got them from... Um, Panera because no stove, so I couldn't cook any bread. Um, but now I'm going to taste it. Oh, by the way, there's no such thing as too much um, black pepper. <laughs> yeah, I kind of we kind of feel like that around the, this house too. So, all right, so a little more, a little more broth there. And uh, what I can't figure out though, Victoria, mm -hmm. what what kind of a container are you going to put that in to ship it to me? I just don't. <laughs> oh, it's well, now stomach. you know perfectly well that I can drive <laughs> in about 12 hours. Yeah, no, so. I know you can drive. That, that This lady can drive, that's for sure. But no, I'm not going to have you do that for one bread bowl. I'll just take your recipe and try to duplicate it. <laughs> All right, that's okay. I'm going to taste and I'm going to take a sip of wine. Mm. That's all That's all I like to hear when you're so much trying my food, too. It's just, mm, mm, <laughs> mm. Um, rendering the um, the bacon and the onions and the um, celery and that little bit of um, oil from the smoked oysters has really just infused it with such a good flavor. Here we go. The Antonio. Absolutely. Definitely. Um, I snuck a, a sip of it a minute ago with just a smoked oyster. And it really, um, I can't talk eloquently like um, Peter can, but it just nope. really did enhance the flavor. And this is absolutely delicious. 
touch more salt and a touch more cooking time on the potatoes. But other than that, this is mine. Maybe a touch more black pepper. <laughs> <laughs> Excuse me. That's so Cheers. That's delicious. Thank you. And, you, and I know you've already written a page and I know you're going to share your recipe because you always do. Thank you very, very much. Uh, you're plus, welcome, the, plus the great story that you're going to write with it. I know you do. <laughs> I'll try. Thank you. Man. All right. And thanks for being such a superhero and, and, and not being a quitter and go through a power outage and everything <laughs> that you went through today and didn't give up and still got on here and cooked. Absolutely. I, I've been looking forward to it. So yeah, it was, it was great. Next time it'll be a little more organized. Um, God willing. <laughs> it was great. I think it was perfect. Yeah. All right. Thank you so much. Cheers. Cheers, y'all. <laughs> All right. So after the appetizers and after a great dinner like that, uh, we're going to finish the, um, our stew in a bowl. What's next? We're going to have our dessert. Every dinner ends with a, well, almost every dinner ends with a dessert, right? And tonight, yep. Peter's going to share the, um, a traditional dessert. He's going to tell you why and why it pairs. Yep. Okay. Well, I just uh, took my little individual one and unmolded it onto the plate. It's still a hair soft, but it'll it'll be close enough. And I'm going to get a little cinnamon on it. Uh, it's not a little cinnamon, but um, but um, so butter, the reason I sugar. Think, Butter, sugar, cinnamon. Cinnamon. <sighs> so yeah, I know. I'm, uh, I'll be I'll be looking for you in about an hour. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay, I'll see you. Um. So, and the reason I picked it with red wine with desserts, you always want to go with a more with with desserts that are not super acidic. You want to go with something like this. It has all those all these nice toasty notes, the buttery notes. And the cinnamon, all of that will play beautifully against the cinnamon is one of the one of the keys because that that stands up to the backbone, all that structure that I told you the Cabernet has. So um, so let's do a little taste here and see how it is. Mm. Mm. Yeah. You know? Mm. Oh that yeah. Well, I've had that so many times it's it's kind of burned into my uh, in my synapses, but let's see how it works with the wine. And this one was a little bit of a guess, so we'll see. Oh yeah, and that works beautifully. And red wines can stand up to sweetness much more than you'd expect them to. Right. If, if, you, if you're getting near the end of the meal and you've finished your first bottle of red and still have a little food, go ahead and open a second one because you're gonna wanna continue it with the dessert. And now that sounds so much more. I can, it's so easier to understand that than than a recipe that calls to use leftover wine. I, that part it just doesn't. Compute. I know. I, I know. I know. I, I I didn't explain it well. I had to put it in your system. So <laughs> yeah, but, thank you. <laughs> but boy, is that wine the cinnamon all of a sudden becomes pops out and makes the wine taste even better. And all mm. those wonderful buttery toasty notes are just great against this wine. Mm. Oh, this is a this is a fantastic combination, and it it really makes the dessert better. It's that that sort of old school Greek Greek flavor profile that where the where you get the sort of the nutty toasty notes, and you get cinnamon, and you get sweet, and that's what what is it that the Greeks say, Peter, when they're when they're toasting? Oofa, oofa, what is it? Oofa, oofa. Cheers, buddy. Cheers. <clears throat> oh, that's so delicious. I might have to go pour myself a little bit more of that. I well, you're gonna finish the bottle, I'm sure of that. So um well Steph's out there with the bottle, so I hopefully there's something left for me. And then yeah, I'll oh, go for a little okay. bit more. Well, yeah, okay. <laughs> <clears throat> well, what a wonderful um what a wonderful pairing and, and some choices that we probably wouldn't have naturally thought about. Having uh, the cab sab with a sugary dessert like that, having the cab sab with a, a stew in a bread bowl like that, um, or even the mushrooms. They're, so it's a great recipes, great pairing, great sharing. Thank you all so very much. Um, Kim, I hope you I hope you got some good recipes out of here and uh, look forward to seeing you cook again soon too, because Kim, you're right. And uh, 
Uh, where's Tanya? Do we is Tanya still here with us? Our compliance officer, our friend Tanya Note, sister sister has had to log out. Okay, great. So we're just gonna go ahead and call it a night. I just want to make sure Tanya didn't have any last words. Peter, do you have any last words for everybody about uh, this wine or any wine or the future that we have here? Well, I mean, it's something something you were saying is when you know when you were a kid, you dreamed of having your own vineyard because Let's face it, Greek Italian families always are drinking wine, but it was often some pretty awful wine. You know, my grandfather yeah, always had this big had this big jug of something under the sink, and it was never very good. But you know, it was always wine with food. You don't was it the one with the wicker wine? basket on it? No, that's the Italian. The Greek is just a big, <laughs> big jug. Um, but and um, but. It's always about wine and food, not just the wine on its own. Wine, food, and and family and friends. It's all and yes. this time of year, that's even more important to to keep that in mind. Wine, so, food, family, and friends. One hundred and forty-four people. We had dinner together with one hundred and forty-four family members, and we shared some great recipes and some great wine. And it just, you know, what there's, we get to do it. Yep. Nobody, great. nobody else does it. We do. We get to do it. Big hugs, Kim. All right. God bless everybody. Have a great night. Thanks for tuning in. We'll see you next week where we've got some more great cooks lined up, some more great sharing lined up, and we're going to feature another one of our fantastic wines again on Wednesday. Opa. Opa. Love you all. Thanks, Doug. Thanks, Victoria. Thank you, Peter. Have a great night.